one tesla waiting as you can see there six cars charging good morning this is marcus here from ev journey and we're in august and it's a sunday and i'm going to drive from tavira in the algarve all the way up to lisbon and we're going to check the charging network on route now it's very early in the morning now it's seven o'clock now we're going to do something I said you should never do in my video about charging in Portugal. And I'll leave that video link here. Seven o'clock, because the charging situation from Tervera to Villa Real Sant Antonio, the east of the Algarve has been very bad. Now in this town, there's four CCS 60 kilowatt chargers. There's some type two chargers in, in Villa Real. There's I think 150 plus charger or two and there's some 50 kilowatt chargers but they've always been full while i've been on holiday so i've been charging at the supercharger in my shopping which has been two weeks in tavira in the algarve and just to let you know i've charged five times in my shopping that's the supercharger about 20 minutes from here and i've charged once on a mobi e type 2 charger and i've done 1005 kilometers in the algarve so we're going to choose Mio. Here's the 50 kilowatt charger here. I don't know why it's making so much noise because no one's using it. Look at the noise it's making. Anyway, let's try Mio, see if that works. CCS is what we want. Connect the cable to the car. See if that starts. It's getting connected. Yeah, we're at 29%. And now at 30%, we're only getting 45 kilowatts. We won't get more in a Model 3. In another car, you might get 50 kilowatts. Um, and it's going to take one hour to 100%. And we need to get to 100% to get back to Lisbon without charging. So I've come at 7 in the morning. I managed to get the space, but a BYD has just driven up. Perhaps I can wait for this, but I'm going to speak to them because this car needs an hour to charge now today i'm then going to drive the way to lisbon and we're going to check the chargers en route at every spot on the service station along the motorway see what the situation is see if the situation is good or bad but i'm not risking it i'm here in the morning i got the charger early lidl is the cheapest ccs charger in the whole of tavira um so it shouldn't be too expensive and i'm using the mio card and if you need to use Mio, I'll leave my referral code below and you'll get some discounts. Mio is a great application to use in Portugal on all the public chargers. So I'm just walking into town to see if I can get breakfast somewhere. But it's a bit bizarre. I spoke to the BYD owners and they said that it's going to take an hour for me to charge and there's another charge in Pingo Dos and Galp. Uh, they said, don't worry, we'll wait an hour because it's cheaper here. So what am I paying with Mio? So on this charger this morning with Mio, I'm paying 33 cents per kilowatt hour, not too bad. The Galp charger is actually 45 cents per kilowatt hour, and the Pingo Dos charger is 63 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, if it was me, I probably wouldn't wait an hour and I would probably go to Galp, especially today, because I'm not gonna waste an hour on holiday. Um, so I'd definitely go to Galp. They're not going to use a Type 2 charger because on these boxes it comes with Chad and most CCS and Type 2. But the Type 2 is more expensive. So what would you do? Would you wait an hour or would you go where it's slightly more expensive? Leave your comments below. But if a lot of you are going to say I shouldn't be charging to 100%, I should only be charging to 80%. This is going to be much quicker, probably to 80%. This going to take 30, 40 minutes. Um, and then the people will get this charger quicker and you're kind of right but I definitely need to charge to 100% today because I don't want queues on the way back to my home and when I get home I probably get home with around 10% so I definitely need the 100% you could say well you could charge on the route well I could but there is a big likelihood today that there's going to be queues and I've got two cats in the car so I don't want to be waiting queues with the cats in the car one of the cats is okay and will sleep but the other cat meows a lot and he's not very happy in the car um, so that's my excuse what do you think I'm good or bad but again I don't think I'm blocking the charger because in the town very nearby there's another three CCS chargers just got back to the car, it's still seven something in the morning and the BYD driver's left. But there's another car waiting, a Peugeot now. So I spoke to him and said I'll be around 10 minutes. I think he's gonna wait 
for the 10 minutes. So even at seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday in August, it's just showing you how busy this charger is and the chargers around the East Algarve. Last year, it was much easier in this region. Even though there's a few more chargers now, they're often full because there's just so many electric vehicles now in Portugal, everywhere. So I went to an authentic French cafe shop where I had tea and pizzas, about five minutes walk from here. It really is a real French place where they um, make everything themselves. I got some bread to take back, some very nice cereal bread. And for my wife and daughter, I got them a bag of, if you can see that, a bag of croissants and pan au chocolat. Now I'll leave the name of the place here, I can't remember it, but my wife is French, she's actually born in Paris, and she says this is a real authentic French um, pastry shop. So if you really want real French pastries, the Interviewer is an excellent place. Now it's a little bit more expensive than Lidl, but Lidl only opens at 8 o'clock. The... So the car's at 99%, it's just gone into calibrating, and um, the calibration on this car can take 20 minutes sometimes. Um, so I'm definitely going to unplug so the next person can start charging. 99% should hopefully be enough to get home if we don't have too much traffic. So the car's at 94% as you can see there. We've done 17 kilometers since I charged this morning and it says we're gonna arrive home with 8%, which isn't much. So um, if I've got a chance to charge, I may charge an extra 10%. We'll see on the way. So we're going there from Cabanas to Tavira, all the way up the motorway until we get to just near Lisbon. And that's 289 kilometers. And we'll look at the charging situation en route. So the car's at 93% because I had to put air conditioning on here while we wait for the cats and people and stuff. We're just leaving now, it's seven minutes past three. Check the charging network in the third Sunday of September on the way. September. <laughs> Let's check the charging network in the third Sunday of August in 2024 between the Algarve and Lisbon. Let's go. We're coming up to the first service station in Tavira and here, I think it's one of the only service stations we're going to go past today that doesn't have any chargers. Um, and he, but they're currently installing rapid chargers here. I don't know which company is doing it, but I did hear that they're installing rapid chargers here. I did actually see some diggers here the other day. So hopefully next time we come past, there'll be some CCS chargers here. We can try. So we're just coming past the Tesla chargers in Mar Shop in Lolay. And we're not going to go and have a look at these ones. And according to this, there's a 15 minute wait and there are currently two cars on route. So all the eight chargers are full and there's two cars on route. And they're currently a 15 minute wait. Doesn't seem too long, but sometimes it says that. Sometimes it can be like a 30 minute wait. So it's just an estimation. But anyway, that's bad. The first superchargers are full, as I expected. So the first service station with a charger, this is the Galp service station on the Via Infant near Low Lay. And this just, just got 150 kilowatt charger. This needs to be upgraded, but anyway, let's see if it's available, shall we? The car's saying I'm going to arrive with 7% now, and it's very hot, it's 37 degrees Celsius. And um, yeah, I think we're eating into more energy than we should. We're gonna continue from there. So this is great news because this one's actually free. Is it working? Um, no, it's not working. So this one here used to be really reliable and used to work, but it's out of service. So um, that's really bad. 150 kilowatt hour charger here, which I used a lot in my ID3, this one here, and it was always reliable. It's currently out of service in August. So that is not good at all. So we're on the main motorway now between the Algarve and Lisbon, the A2, and now we're coming up to the Ionity chargers at Almodova services. So there should be six working chargers here, and hopefully there won't be a queue. Let's go and check, shall we? And I think last year there were only two chargers here, but now there's six. So uh, yeah, that's much better, and they have shade. We're going to have a look. There's a queue, there's at least one Tesla waiting. Um, and there's six cars charging, so that's bad. So um, we've definitely got a queue here. One Tesla waiting, as you can see there. 
six cars charging. They're all non-Teslas here, um, apart from the one that's waiting. Um, so yeah, I don't think six was enough. I think we need more than six chargers here. Um, so we just leave now, so that's bad. Let's see what it's like at the next one at um, Algestral. So we've come up to the services now of Algestral. And this one's got a 50 kilowatt charger, then uh, I think another 50 kilowatt and 150 kilowatt. So three chargers in all, not the best. Um, let's have a look, see what this one's like. Now this is probably the best position for chargers, they're kind of halfway between Lisbon and the Algarve. This is a really good position. So over here is the old 50 kilowatt charger, which I used to use a lot. Um, and there is definitely a car charging there. And it looks like there's another car waiting. So there's a Peugeot there and a Cynic. One of them is, ch no, the, per the Cynic is charging on Type 2, where it should be using CCS and the Peugeot is using CCS. It's charging on Type 2 in a motorway service station. It's not good because a Cynic obviously can use CCS, I guess. So this service station has been renovated, so it looks all new. Not quite sure what's wrong with the old one, but anyway. Um, they modernise things. So we just go around here, check these chargers here now, the newer chargers. So there's an Ionic on the 150 or 160. Then there looks like there's a Peugeot or Mercedes or Volvo on the 60 kilowatt. Oh, so no, it's actually they've got 260, they've got 150, and they've got one on Type 2. So there's no queue, but um, there are two cars using Type 2. So that doesn't seem great, does it? Um, so they're all completely full. Um, and I'd say there was a queue because using Type 2 on the motorway services is not a good idea really, is it? Unless you really have to. So we're just going to have a look at Grandola now. Now this is where they've just installed four new very quick chargers. So we've got a total of six very quick chargers here, I think. Um, so yeah, we're going to see if there's any queues here. And this one always used to have queues. Now I can see queues, but I think it's queues um, to get in. Um, but I can't see any queues for chargers, so we go around this way. See if we can jump the queue. from here it's extremely busy here as you can tell um, but I can't quite see over to the chargers at the moment um, there's gonna be a gap here where I can have a look so there seems two available a Chadamo and a normal one and there's seems to be another one available and another one so i think we've got three available here which is actually very good um so yeah it's, it's out of the six ccs chargers three are available so it's very good news they added the extra four chargers here because before it was just two and it was bad so yeah so finally we found somewhere where there's no queue so that's great um and we're going to the next place now which will be the supercharger for alcast du sal but we'll actually go there we'll um have a look in the app to see how many are available there or not. So yeah, so one place without queues, so that's good. So we're just coming past Alcasa du Sal. This is where they've got 10 supercharger stalls, only V2, and um, they're all full at the moment. It says a 20 minute wait and it says there's car and there's five cars en route. Um, so that's bad there. So um, obviously there's no free superchargers today available in Alcasa do Sal or in Ma Shopping earlier. So um, the last chargers we're going to check on route are in the Alcasa do Sal services. These ones here, these Tesla chargers, not actually in the service station. They're a little bit further into town. So it's a little bit of a di diversion from the motorway, so we won't go in. 
So as expected, the closer we get to Lisbon, the more traffic there is. So it's hard to do 120 kilometers an hour. But now we're coming up to the last service station before I get home, which is Alcácer do Sal. Now here they've got the old 50 kilowatt charger. I think they've got two, I think they've got 150 kilowatt and one 50 kilowatt. Well, it could be two 150 kilowatts to 50 kilowatt. Well, we will have a look, see if there's a queue there or not, and uh, see what's available. So we're just pulling off now to our Casa do Sal. Um, it's quite windy today, to be honest, so not the best for consumption of the car. Uh, anyway, let's have a look. We go around the back again. You can see the 50 kilowatt charger, if it's still there. It's over there, there's a 50 kilowatt charger, and no one's using it. I wonder if it's working or not. Let's see if we can have a look. Um, if the light's on and it's green, it's working. And the light is on and it is green. So I think that one's working, so that's good, that one's available. And over there, just in front of us, I can see one, two cars charging. So I think these are full. And there's another car waiting. Um, yes, yeah, so there's one, I think 160 kilowatt and 150 kilowatt over there. And there seems to be two cars charging. Definitely one or two cars waiting, so that's bad. Um, so we'll just um, go over here now. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the distance there, there's definitely one car charging. There's another two cars there, so um, yeah, so I'd say this is completely full here, apart from that 50 kilowatt charger there. The problem is when you get to there, you can't go back to that 50 kilowatt charger because it's all one way. Um, so it's always best to try these 50 kilowatt chargers first if possible. Obviously they're not the quickest if you've got 160 kilowatt over there. So there is definitely, there's actually a Tesla queuing. So it seems to be at least two cars queuing there for the charger. Um, yeah, so that's not good. Um, and then there's the empty 50 kilowatt charger over there, but once you get over there you can't come back over here. So, um, yeah, so, um, so it's not the best location. Here they need to do what they did in um, Grandola and add another four um, rapid chargers. They should be good here, perhaps they'll do that soon, um, hopefully. And the other side of the road you can see from here seems to have two cars charging there as well. So we're just coming up to the junction now where you can either go to Lisbon on the Vasco da Gama bridge or on the 25th of April bridge. As my house is just south of Lisbon, we won't need to go on any of the bridges. But if we go on the direction of the Vasco da Gama, Gama bridge, just as you get onto the bridge, there's a service station there. And I think that's just got one 50 kilowatt charger just before you get to Lisbon. But really it's only about 10 kilometers from Lisbon. So basically you're in Lisbon where there are lots of chargers anyway. And we're going to go on a different route on the 25th of April bridge route back to my house. Actually, I forgot there's one more service station there in Palmela that does actually have chargers. So um, we'll have a look to see what they're like. That's probably only about 20 or 30 kilometers from um, the center of Lisbon. Um, yeah, so we'll have a look there to see what the charging situation is like at the services of Palmela. So we're just coming up to Palmela services here. But if you reach it to this, this service station, you're almost in Lisbon, I guess. Um, you might need that extra push to get to Lisbon. Or if perhaps you're not going to Lisbon, perhaps you're going somewhere further on. You definitely might need to charge here. So let's have a look. So again, all these service stations, so I've got petrol stations and somewhere to eat and restaurants and all of that in Portugal. And these ones have got shade, you just follow the electric car signs on the road. And let's have a look where well, there seems to be a electric car. Is that electric car or petrol? I don't know. All right. So there is a 50 kilowatt that looks like smart is just unplugging from or plugging into. And there is two CCS there and two cars are plugged in. So um, they're all being used at the moment, 150 kilowatt and it looks like 160 kilowatts, so 260 kilowatts. They're all being used currently. And I'm not sure if the other car was queuing or not, but I'm not sure if it was electric or not. So I don't know, <laughs> but anyway. 
So today hasn't been great, especially if you're a Tesla owner and you only want to use Tesla superchargers. I would definitely re recommend getting a Mio card in Portugal and I'll leave a link below on how to do that um, with a discount code if you're coming to Portugal. And even if you're not a Tesla driver, um, and then there's only been a few there's only been a couple of posts available, most have been occupied and there's been queues at some, so that's not good. But to be honest, we've passed many little towns and places on the way which do have other fast chargers and other types of chargers which we could have investigated, but I only investigated all of the chargers that were on the motorway, apart from the Tesla, which is a little bit off the motorway, but I could see that on my Tesla screen here. Now I'm just about to get home now, it's only 15 kilometers away. Um, the car's saying I'm going to get there with 13%. So it was definitely a good idea that I charged earlier this morning to 100%. This has worked out really well, so I haven't needed to stop to charge. So if you can charge to 100% before you leave, that is definitely a worthwhile recommendation. And that perhaps depending on your car, will stop you queuing and all of that. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching this episode, hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to click subscribe and bye!